Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. So, have you ever wanted to PvP, but you're a bit worried that your class or spec may be too difficult? Or do you simply want to pick up one of the easiest specs to play to give you the best chance at pushing high in PvP? Well, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the viable specs from Shadowlands and ranking them in terms of ease of play. We're going to be having three rankings, easy, moderate, and difficult. These rankings are based primarily off of Arena, but some of the reasoning for specific specs being placed may overlap into Battlegrounds, Duels, or just general world PvP. So, without any further ado, let's jump into it. Just to give you a little more information on our tiers, the first is going to be easy. Inside of this, we're placing specs that are generally very easy to play or pick up when it comes to Arena. These specs have what's called a low skill floor. Simply put, a skill floor is the minimum level of ability required to be effective with a spec. Then our moderate tier will include specs that have a little bit more depth to them. This could mean that you've got more utility to worry about, a harder rotation, or have a much harder time surviving when trained. Then finally, our last tier is difficult. These specs have an extremely high skill cap in order to perform well at the highest level, requiring a certain amount of knowledge and skill in order to truly master. Okay, we're going to be separating specs into ranged, melee, and healer just to give the most optimized rankings. So kicking things off with ranged, we've got our easy tier in which our first edition is going to be Balance Druids. Balance remains as one of the easiest ranged specs to play for a few reasons. First of all, they have one of the simplest rotations in the game with a large portion of their damage all being from instant casts, so Sunfire, Moonfire, and of course Star Surge. Balance doesn't really have to worry about utility outside of the occasional dispel or off heal and remain to be one of the tankiest casters, meaning your positioning or kiting doesn't really make or break how you perform. Now, of course, as with all specs, there is going to be some arguments for how hard the spec is. But for Balance, the hardest it gets is attempting to pre-bear form stuns and land cyclones. Just a high instant damage and extremely durable caster, making them one of the easiest to pick up and perform well on. Also being placed into that easy tier, we've got Marksmanship Hunters. MM, of course, isn't your standard range spec, meaning that you don't have to deal with interrupts, which makes it obviously a lot easier. But with a simple and uninterruptible rotation, all of their CC being instant coupled with a lot of mobility in order to kite and build distance, obviously there are some tools like Pet Sack to worry about, but other than that, securing an instant freezing trap and then unloading damage onto your kill target makes them extremely easy to pick up and perform well on, especially now due to their inherent strength in Shadowlands having some of the highest burst damage possible. So, if you enjoy bursty ranged classes but hate dealing with interrupts, then Marksmanship is going to be your best bet. The last addition being placed into our easy difficulty is going to be Destro Warlock. Now, if you got to experience Battle for Azeroth, you will know why Destruction is going into our easy tier. Although Destruction is going to be a shadow of its former self in terms of general strength, the playstyle remains for the most part relatively the same, having multiple schools of magic with Chaos Bolt still hitting hard. Combine multiple schools of magic with the fact that they're extremely strong due to their mastery and demon armor, Destro Warlocks almost act as a ranged turret. Find a good place in the center of the map and cast Immolate, Chaos Bolt, or Fear. Moving up to our moderate difficulty tier, now we have our first edition of Affliction Warlock. Affliction isn't terribly similar to Destro in terms of playstyle, and what makes it harder is its reliance on one school of magic in order to deal damage. If you get kicked on Shadow, then you're unable to deal any damage, use any defensives, or even peel for yourself or your teammates. Having this drawback can make it a lot harder for newer players to pick up and jump into PvP. You could argue that a lot of Affliction's damage is instant. Well, you wouldn't be wrong, but in order to deal any relevant pressure and score kills, you're going to have to cast. Another very important factor is that Affliction lacks a lot of the tankiness that Destro has due to their mastery, meaning that you're going to have to kite and avoid a lot more damage in order to be successful. Also having a moderate difficulty, we've got the newly reworked Shadow Priest. If you've played any version of Shadow, you might think that they're quite challenging, having to worry about team utility, dealing with interrupts, and having one of the more difficult rotations when it comes to PvP. Well, the reworks to Shadow have made their rotation extremely easy. No longer do you have to build up void form stacks and worry about consistently ramping up. Shadow now has multiple ways to instantly get their dots up in the form of two new talents, Damnation and Unfurling Darkness, as well as void form being removed as we know it and now acts basically as a damage CD, making interrupts a lot easier to deal with. As with Balance and Destro, Shadow Priest is very tanky. You don't really have to worry about mobility or kiting in order to survive. 
What makes Shadow Moderate difficulty though is their utility and CC, and is what you're going to have to master in order to perform well on one yourself. But if you enjoy having an abundance of utility, high dot damage, and great CC, Shadow Priest is an amazing pick. For our final viable arena range spec being placed into our moderate difficulty tier, we've got Elemental Shamans. Elemental is almost similar to Shadow in the way that you've got to pay attention to a lot of extra things. Elemental has a short CD interrupt as well as Grounding Totem, which means that if you want to perform well, you'll have to be very vigilant about enemy casts and important spells. Pair this up with the fact that Elemental is hard to play when focused down. Dealing with compositions with a high amount of stuns to heavily impact your kiting makes being disruptive and rotating your defensive necessary in order to perform well. In general though, Elemental's rotation is very simple, consisting of mostly instant high burst damage abilities, which makes deciding when to burst another important factor of playing Elemental well. Overall, I'd say Elemental isn't too hard to pick up initially, but to perform at a high level and against certain compositions, it is moderately difficult. All right, that concludes our easy and moderate tiers. Now let's jump to difficult. For this, we have one class, and that's going to be Mage. Now you may think based off of BFA, Fire Mage, that Mage is simple and has a ton of viable compositions. Well, yeah, you're not entirely wrong. In BFA, Fire Mage wasn't exactly the hardest spec to play in a caster composition with no CD, Greater Pyroblast, and a ridiculous amount of haste. That being said, we're in Shadowlands now, and Mage has lost a lot of what made it easy. All Mage specs have a relatively simple rotation, but similar to Elemental, choosing when to do your damage is the most important part. Mage compositions always rely heavily on CC, so securing crowd control as a Mage is one of the hardest aspects especially considering a lot of the time that you're playing with a melee, so you won't have another caster soaking up interrupts. And doing this well requires a lot of skill and awareness, especially at the higher levels of PvP. Cross CCing and bursting at the correct times are not the only reasons for mages being difficult though. Another reason is that they are the class that relies the most on mobility in order to survive. So you've not only got to worry about interrupts, when to burst, securing CC, but also balancing your mobility with kiting and playing aggressively. All three mage specs require an extreme extremely high skill cap in order to perform at the highest levels, and without a doubt are one of the hardest specs to pick up and perform well on, but if you do master a mage, it can really pay off, as most of the strong comps for a few expansions have always included a well-played mage. With all three mage specs going into our difficult tier, that concludes all of our ranged specs. On screen, you can now see what each spec has been placed into in terms of difficulty. Oh, and if you're enjoying the video so far and want to stay up to date with all of our Shadowlands updates, then a subscription to the channel channel costs nothing and helps us out a ton. Alright, moving on, let's talk healers, again starting off with easy, in which our first edition is going to be Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin is generally considered the easiest healer to pick up and play. The reasoning behind this is that they have the most recovery mechanics and strong CDs paired up with powerful healing. The ability to buff their heals with Avenging Wrath makes them able to heal through any damage with ease. If targets drop low, then they still provide Blessing of Sacrifice and Hand of Protection to completely recover from the situation. In terms of survival, themselves, of course having an immunity and short CD wall usable in stuns makes them one of the easiest healers to pick up and jump into arenas with as they are very reactive. If a target drops low, you trinket sacrifice. If you drop low yourself, you bubble, and you don't really have to focus on doing something proactively. With Shadowlands, Holy Paladins deal with interrupts extremely well thanks to the new addition of Concentration Aura, making interrupt length 30% shorter. Just in general, it's a very easy healing class to pick up and play. Once you get the hang of rotating your defensives and avoiding CC, which pose the only real challenges. All right, next up, jumping into the moderate difficulty, we have Restoration Shamans. This spec currently has some of the strongest healing in the game, and with the majority of it coming from Earthshield and Riptide, it makes their healing very simple. However, Restoration Shaman as a spec brings a lot more to worry about than other healers. Being one of the only healers with an interrupt, it means that you'll often have to pay more attention to important spell casts to either look to use Wind Shear or Grounding Totem, while also managing offensive play like stopping CC, purging, or even hexing. Resto Shamans also have very limited recovery mechanics outside of Spirit Link Totem, and requires you to be very proactive with your defensive CDs, looking to pre-Earthen Wall Totem, pre-Astral Shift, and even making sure to swap Earth Shield on swaps. Not to mention, if Shaman healing does get toned down a little, Shamans are one of the healers that are required to hard cast abilities in order to heal through pressure, which we feel more than justifies their moderate difficulty. Also being classed as moderately difficult, we have Discipline Priests. Initially, people may think Disc is hard to pick up with a unique healing style and natural offensive playstyle. 
The reality is though, to pick up a disc and play it, you don't need all that much experience. Disc healing is incredibly simple. You keep up Atonement, you keep up Purge the Wicked, and then Shadow Man, Penance, and Smite. But I think we can all agree that Disc has to be one of the highest skill ceiling healers, having a ton of cool tricks that you can pull off, even more so now with Shadow Word Death being baseline and the addition of Thought Steal. But multiple defensive CDs, two schools of magic to heal with, makes them not too hard to pick up and play. But mastering dealing damage, avoiding CC, and all of the other small micro plays that you can make on Disc gives them moderate difficulty. And our last addition to our moderate tier is going to be Mistweaver Monks. Mistweaver isn't the most complex healer by any means, having a relatively simple healing rotation and very high throughput. Where their difficulty comes in though is their ability to survive and avoid CC, as Mistweaver lacks any of the real defensives or recovery mechanics that other healers provide. In order to survive as a Mistweaver, you have to be very good at kiting, utilizing your roles and transcendence, and the same goes for avoiding CC. If you've got no cocoon, it's also very hard to recover in sticky situations or if you fall behind, having to hard cast in order to heal targets up. All right, moving on to our hardest tier, and the last healer left is, of course, Restoration Druid. Resto Druids are without a doubt the hardest healer to pick up and master. The ability to CC, deal damage, limited defensives, weak initial healing make them all about reading the game state and constantly adapting. And the new addition of forms makes it almost integral to be reading the game and predicting stuns or swaps to swap into bear form when focused. The ability to deal damage with cat form and feral affinity makes it a very intricate balancing act, deciding between when to to do damage and when to heal. Other than the newly added nature swiftness, if you come out of CC and your teammates low, then you have no way to quickly recover, which makes proactively using your CDs like Iron Bark and making you have hots on the correct target extremely important. Druids are also the only healer that has to manage a zero cooldown, high impact CC like Cyclone. Sure, priests have mind control, but it's more often than not that druids are required to utilize Cyclone in order to prevent damage, secure kills, and just to generally control the game state. Druids are one of the hardest healers to pick up and hardest to master. All right, that's going to conclude our healer difficulty list. On screen now, you'll see another recap of both the healers and range DPS. So that leaves us with just the melees to cover. Same as before, let's kick things off with the easiest specs to play. This one will take pretty much no one by surprise, and that's Demon Hunters. If you're looking for a melee to quickly learn and jump into PvP with, then look no further. Demon Hunters are no questions asked the easiest spec to play. They have a very simple rotation, multiple win conditions with high damage, the ability to burn mana with mana rift combined with passive healing and short defensive CDs, it all results in a class that's both easy to pick up and easy to master. Pairing up with a Demon Hunter for our easiest melees to play, we have Assassination Rogues. Assassination Rogue brings high lockdown, high single target pressure, and almost an attack dog playstyle. Despite being a rogue, which generally has a high skill ceiling attached to it, Assassination comes with an extremely low skill floor. Sure, there is some potential for flashy plays like sapping trinkets and doing other rogue type plays, but the bare basics of Assassination are incredibly simple and rightfully so make it one of the easiest melee specs to pick up. So if you like a simple rotation and general ease of play, but still like to have the potential to make flashy plays, Assassination is a fantastic choice. Last up, making the cut for easiest melee, we have Frost DKs. Frost is essentially the brute force cleaver. The embodiment of a melee cleave, Frost is about one thing and that's damage, with the ability to now wield two-handed weapons via Might of the Frozen Waste, making Frost DK a little less about chill streak and more about hard-hitting obliterates. Simply put, Frost brings high burst, decent consistent pressure, and above average tools in order to survive. Despite now gaining a few new abilities, the complexity compared to Unholy just isn't there for Frost. Moving now to our moderate difficulty melee, our first addition is going to be a group of three melee. These are Enhancement Shamans, Retribution Paladins, and Feral Druids. All three of these specs come with, again, for the most part, simple rotations, focusing mainly around high burst damage. The complexity of their kits, though, comes with their utility. In the case of Rets, they've of course got their blessings. Enhance has Grounding, Purge, and Shear, while Feral Druid has their Cyclones and Affinities. All three specs bring some very good off healing, which adds another layer onto the melee spec. Being wary of when to step back and support your team comes with a moderate amount of difficulty. Joining these specs, we've also got Arms Warrior. When you think Warriors, you think the basic high damage, zero thought for your teammates playstyle. Well, that's not the case with Arms. Arms Warriors have so many tools, which when used will separate a good warrior from a bad one. 
Things like Duel, Disarm, War Banner, Spell Reflect, Intervene, all of these tools require a certain amount of overview and foresight of how the game's going. You can't just mindlessly pump damage into a target to be successful. This is why Arms is a moderate level of difficulty. Unholy DK also comes with a moderate difficulty, while sharing a lot of the same tools as its Frost DK counterpart, Unholy has a lot more tools at its disposal, paired up with a far more complex damage rotation, relying a lot more on micro CC and passive damage in order to create pressure and secure kills. Also going into our stacked moderate difficulty melee section, we've got Windwalkers. Windwalkers are a relatively simple spec to just pick up and do well with when it comes to damage, but what makes them that much harder to perform well on is surviving and enabling your team. Unlike a lot of other melee, they rely heavily on their mobility and kiting in order to survive, primarily using defensive CDs or mobility to live enemy setups. As for enabling their team, tools like Ride the Wind, Tiger's Lust, and Ring of Peace can be incredible utility tools in the right hands. At first glance, a very simple melee, but with a large amount of nuance both offensively and defensively. And last but not least, we've got Survival Hunters. Survival is a very different type of melee, it's almost a melee ranged hybrid with a large portion of your overall damage being from range. This is where survival gets tricky. It's all about learning when to go in melee range and when to get out, combined with making the most out of your instant CC. Tools like Tracker's Net, Mending Bandage, High Explosive Trap, and Roar of Sacrifice give survival that extra depth and gives it a very unique playstyle in which you have to know your limits and can be quite an overwhelming spec to play at first. All right, now we're jumping up to our hardest melees or, well, melee, as the hardest spec right now to pick up and play is going to be Subtlety Rogue. While they may seem easier to pick up on beta right now, this is largely due to just how strong they are. But trust us when we say that Sub Rogue is not an easy class to pick up and perform well on at a high level. The whole playstyle revolves around stun locks, burst damage, and CC. Not only do you need to know and master your burst rotation, factoring in things like Relentless and Orc Racial, you also are required to control the pace of the game, utilizing your high CC to stun multiple targets at once in quick succession, which comes at a very steep learning curve. But without a doubt, this is one of the most rewarding specs to play with an almost unreachable skill ceiling and a very worthy spec for our hardest to play melee title. All right, that concludes our easiest to most difficult melee specs to play. And again, a recap on our healer and ranged picks as well. We hope you enjoyed our take on the easiest melee, ranged, and healers to play for PvP, primarily focused on Arena. And for more information on any of the specs included in this video, be sure to check out our detailed guides giving you all the information you need to set up your chosen spec ready for Shadowlands Arena. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.